Hi, this is April from the Singer Featherweight Shop, and today I'm going to show you how to use your Singer Buttonholer attachment on your Singer Featherweight. Um, but you can apply this instructional video to any of your old vintage Singers, um, Singer 15, 66, 99, 201, etc. Um, I am using, like I said, a Singer Buttonholer. It is the one from the 40s that originally came out in 1948. This is my preferred one. I know they made a later one that had kind of a plastic housing in the 60s, kind of came in what they call a Jetson style uh, case. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like to use that one as well. I find that the bite stitch lever would shift a little more. So this is the one that I prefer with the black housing. It comes in a green or a black um, treasure case uh, for the low shank model machines. And you'll also know that it's the right one if it has the right part number. This one is 160506. And um, we do test these and sample them in the shop for those that we sell. I, we guarantee them because there have been some that while they look perfect on the outside, there are some you know, mechanical things on the inside that if they're not working properly, the button holder doesn't work. So make sure that the one that you have is, you know, if you're going to order one, is tested and sampled. So today we're going to learn how to do this um, properly on a featherweight and make buttonholes. But before we can get started, the first thing we're going to do is screw down this feed cover plate, like I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to use, oh, well, first let me show you. There's two holes on the bed of your machine, and they will be there on a 221 um, Singer Featherweight as well. And you just need to screw that down into one of those holes. At the same time, and actually the most important thing, making sure that this slot aligns to the needle hole. So if you want to carefully lower your needle um, so that it you know, aligns to that needle hole with that slot, you can do that. And then you're going to want to screw this screw very, very tightly. So mine's tight right now to my finger, but it's obviously not tight enough because I'm still getting some play. So I'm going to pause this and I'm going to use a screwdriver um, to tighten it good and tight. I will say, though, um, some of these Singer screwdrivers work great um, and they're fine to, you know, to tighten it up. But if it, you know, if you have to get it really tight and it's still shifting, um, use a, a more modern, um, higher quality screwdriver. We do have maintenance screwdrivers in the shop if you need them. Um, but for today, I think this one will be okay. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to tighten that up tight. Okay, so I've tightened it as tight as I can get it. And there is no play in the, in the feed cover plate. You can see it's not shifting at all. So that'll be just, just right. So before we can attach the button holder at all, we need to first select the right size cam to go with that corresponds with the button that you're going to be attaching to your garment or a craft project. Um, ordinarily, you like if on a shirt, you're, you're going to have several buttons in a row and they're all going to be the same size. So you're only going to choose one cam for those, for those buttons. So, for example, I have this button here, and this is, um, you know, just a small standard button, probably a little sm larger than a shirt button, but it's still um, something we have to find the right size for. So the button holder would have originally come with nine cams, the ones that would have come in the treasure chest, plus these extra four. It is important that you have all nine so that you can select the right size for your button. So here's one I have here. And the first one I'm going to grab is this one half inch. You can see there's a mark on the back. It has one half. And then I'm going to hold this up to that line to see if it would fit. I'm looking for a little bit of the line on each side of the buttonhole. And I can see here that this one is going to actually be too small because it covers the whole line. So I'm not going to use the one half. I will go up to the five eighths, which is over here. Okay, so this is the 5 eighths, and it, the line just barely peeks out on either side. So I know that that is the right buttonhole template that I will need to use for my buttonhole attachment. Okay, so just to give you an idea, um, here's another button, a larger one, and this 13 16 is about the right size. You might even be able to get away with um, this 15 16 it just has a little more of the line showing. So that one might be a toss up um, for those. And this next size down, I'll try the 3 8 No, that one's going to be too small. So it would be one half. 
And you can see here why it's important to have all nine cams. So you have all the right sizes to choose from. So the one half is the right size for this one. And then here's this itty bitty button. And we'll try that with the three eighths. And that's perfect. I, well, there is one smaller, that's the five sixteenths. This would be like for an infant gown or something where those itty bitty tiny buttonholes. Yeah, that one's just gonna be too small. So we will do the three eighths on that one. Okay. So we select the right size cam that you want, and I'm just going to go with this one for right now. And that would be that 5 8 That's 13 16 Okay, so 5 8 We've measured that. We know that's the right one to use. Here is the button holder, and what you do is you kind of release this back part here. You're going to release it, open it up, and you're gonna, this slides back and forth and front and back. And you can see that there's a, a cog there and that will go in this template, but it's gotta be positioned in the right spot so that it can grip it. So I kind of grab it there, make sure it's flush with this attachment here. And I'm gonna close this up and I'm going to make sure that this fork arm goes over this needle bar as it attaches to the machine. So you're gonna do that by coming from the back side and align this fork arm over the needle bar while at the same time attaching it to the machine, making sure that it's aligned with the shank hole. There is a screw that comes with your button holder. It's a very sturdy, heavy, slotted clamping screw, sturdier even than the one that comes with your presser foot. So you're going to want to make sure that is good and tight to the machine. Sometimes you might even have to use a screwdriver to give it another twist there to make sure it's good and secure. So now I've got the right cam in my button holder, I've got the button holder attached to my machine, and now I'm ready for the next step. So some of the supplies that you're going to need, um, aside from your button holder attachment, is obviously you're going to need some fabric. If you're working on a garment, you'll have a a spot that you will have made mark your buttonholes and I'll just do some samples here to show you. Um, you're also going to need interfacing and I just use a lightweight um, iron-on interfacing and then what you do is you'll obviously iron it to one uh, one side of the fabric so that it's um, on there good and secure and I'll go ahead and do that. I'll pause the camera and do that and then you'll put the the next layer of fabric down so that like just like a garment um, you would have the top layer, the interfacing, and then you would have the, the, under, the under fabric. So um, I suppose occasionally you would just have the top layer and the interfacing, and that can give you some, some st enough stability, but more, most of the time you're going to have at least three layers. If you don't have any of the iron-on lightweight interfacing, you can um, substitute muslin. I've done that before. In a and I'm going to go press this um, under a hot iron so that it will um, secure the interfacing um, down to the other side of the fabric. So on your garment, you're going to, um, usually with a pattern, you're going to have um, your buttons and they're going to run horizontal, or excuse me, vertical. They're going to run here, 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 all the way down your shirt, um, or dress or blouse. And you're going to be able to mark those. So some patterns, they come with a template. Some, they kind of just give you an idea of, for measurements. Um, but if you don't have anything like that, I have seen those accordion style um, buttonhole aligners and you can, you know, space those so you can determine how many buttons you actually want on your shirt and then it will space them out just perfectly. So either way, you're going to have to mark those out so you can have a line here like this or if it was like a craft project and you had something that you needed the buttonhole to go like that, it won't matter. But just make sure that you have a beginning and ending and your line is marked, okay? Um, the most important obviously being the beginning so you know where to start. So I have done some marks here, several, three of them there. So they're all kind of keeping even. So, and that's kind of important so that you know where to start because this button holder can shift um, as it's turning the fabric. It's designed to do that. So what I've done is I've marked those spots and now I'm going to try to figure out, you know, where do I start? Where do I place this? 
Well, one thing you got to do is get this under the under the attachment. Your presser foot or your uh, button holder is not down yet. It's still in the up position. And you're going to turn this crank on your button hole attachment until the button holder is all the way to the back just before it starts to come on the down rotation again. So see, I kind of rotate again. I'm not sure that I've got it just right. I kind of turn it slowly here at the top, wait for it to kind of round that corner, and then I've got it set, okay? Now I'm gonna use my needle as just my kind of verification that I'm in the right spot. So I kind of lower the needle just to kind of touch that dot, but I'm not actually lowering the needle, okay? Now I'm going to drop the button holder. And I know that sounds a little scary, but it doesn't actually touch the machine here in the back. What you're doing by dropping it is that there, these teeth on the bottom of the button holder are very, very grippy, and you want them to grip that fabric. So it is recommended in the manual that you actually drop it. Um, but you can set it down if you want to be more careful, that's fine. Now I'm going to turn this again so that I'm at the front. Oh, I went too far. So I'm rotating it again. And I'm going to rotate it till it just starts to turn. Okay, I'm at the front. Now I need to determine whether I want a very wide buttonhole stitch, narrow buttonhole stitch. Um, it just kind of depends on the size of your button. This is how you adjust that. This is wide, W, N for narrow. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way in between. This is called your bite stitch regulator. Bite spelled B-I-G-H-T. That's the, the width that your needle will go from side to side. It's actually not your needle, it's your attachment, but it will appear like it's your needle. So it's the stitch going from side to side, how wide that is. So for this one, we'll practice and we're going to have it be really, really wide. Okay, so I am set to go with my button or buttonhole. So the first thing I do is I lower my needle and I'm basically bringing up that bobbin thread and I pull it all the way through, okay? Now I am ready to start my button, buttonhole. So I kind of, I, when I'm first getting started, I'm just doing it by hand to make sure that it's going to start properly. Now, if you notice and pay special attention, I'm holding on to these threads. What this is going to do is secure the buttonhole so it doesn't come unraveled and also give it a more finished appearance a smoother effect. So it's stitching, but it's going over both of those tails at the same time. It's virtually hands-free at this point, which is kind of fun to watch. It's amazing the technology that the Singer engineers invented back in those early days. Okay, when you get to the top of the buttonhole, I'm going to pull the threads to the opposite side. Now it is recommended that you make two passes. So at this point, I've already gone around the, uh, over the thread tail, so I don't have to go around them a second time. So, but I am going to make an another pass with the stitching. back to right where I started. So now is when I would lift up my button holder, make sure that my needle is at the highest point, the um, thread take up levers at the highest point so that I can easily pull this out. I'm going to clip those threads both on the top and the bottom. You'll notice I had a, my tension was at two and so then it made this really smooth on the bottom and it pulled those bobbin threads to the, the bottom. Okay, so now my first buttonhole is made. Now, let's do this one more time, but we will adjust 
the bite width. Okay, so once again, I've got this under here, but I can't really put that down yet because I've got to align this just right. So I'm going to go to the very top as it starts to make that curve. Then I'm going to align the needle just to make sure I'm in the right spot, but I'm not actually going to lower my needle. And I'm also going to use kind of with my eyes. This is parallel with something over here. Well, I've got this buttonhole here and I want it to be perfectly even. I don't want it to be kind of cockeyed there. So I'm going to use this edge to make sure it's um, parallel with this buttonhole and it's ready. So now I'm going to twist this again until I get to the very top and it's just starting to curve. Now I'm going to go, let's do a real narrow buttonhole right here so that you can see the difference. Okay, once again, I'm going to pull up that bottom bobbin thread, pull it all the way out. And I'm going to do this part by hand, these first few stitches, just so that I can make sure to catch those thread tails. And if the button is buttonhole's a little narrower, it's a little harder to catch those at first. There we go. But because I marked out with my needle kind of first and aligned that up, you can see now I'm starting to curve, but my button is even with that other one. Button hole. <laughs> so this is a really skinny button hole. I'm making my second pass here. And now I'm back to the beginning. Thread take up levers at the top so it will release easily. Clip those. Now I'm going to show you the buttonholes. That is the same buttonhole cam, but by adjusting the bite width, it looks totally different. There's another type of buttonhole, and that would be your keyhole buttonhole cam. And you can see here that it has like um, a little eyelet there at the top. So it would still fit in your attachment the same way. Kind of adjust it so it fits over that cog. You've got it in two sizes, a 5 8 and a 1 and 1 16 and I, generally I like when I'm going to do a keyhole buttonhole, I would do a wide or even possibly um, slide this over till it was like a four. Um, and then this is kind of what it looks like. And again, more for coats or denim jeans. So that's your keyhole buttonhole. Lastly, I'm going to show you the eyelet. This would be for belt holes or making a hole. Uh, for something where you just wanted it to poke through. Uh, for example, we have a spool pin, Dresden spool pin keeper, which has a little hole there in the center. And so this eyelet cam is really ideal for that. Um, I will tell you that the eyelet cam for the Singer buttonholer is very scarce to find, so it's quite collectible. Um, you can, if you don't have an eyelet, you can substitute and you could um, use the very tiny little buttonhole cam with just the 5 16 and you could maybe just um, adjust your bite width so that it was real narrow, so it's a real tiny little hole. Um, but I will show you how this works, and we'll do that next.